Hello everybody, welcome back. I've got a, a, another demo for you, but this time I want to showcase the Fritillaria. I love this stamp uh, and it was inspired by the Fritillarias in my garden. I've got lots of Fritillarias and they're so beautiful in spring. So to have them in stamp form is just fabulous. And I love adding this font as well to my stamp sets. So we've got the Fritillaria text there as well. So I really love the text in the background. So that gives us two elements to work with. Now the idea with this demo is I wanted to do something a little bit different. I didn't want to have everything prepped within an inch of its life. I wanted to show you how I'm inspired if I just use products that are on my desk. Now I've recently done a lot of Facebook Lives and during those Facebook Lives, I've left lots of products out and I haven't put them away. So I thought, why not use some of those products that I've got on my desk? Um, I've been quite busy the last few weeks. So I thought I would show you how I'm inspired when I just receive a stamp set and I've got no plan. So I've got some paints here. I've got sage, khaki, Byzantium and honeydew. And these are paints that are on my desk. So I'm going to use these paints. You could use any paints, but sometimes it's a nice challenge to challenge yourself and just create with what you've got on your desk. Sometimes with minimal supplies, you'd be surprised what you can create. So I'm going to use this stamp as is, and I'm going to create like a bookmark card. I love this shape of card. And what I'm going to use is my brayer. So I'm going to add two colors and keep this paint skin. These paint skins are ideal for using in your artwork. I love them. Yes, I'm a bit strange, but I do like the paint skins. So I'm just adding the two colors. So one's slightly lighter than the other. So that's the sage and this is the khaki. And you can tell my paints have been well used over the last few weeks because we've got these beautiful paint skins and we'll definitely use them. So we're just going to add this paint. And what I'd suggest is that you actually have a spare piece of card in the background, just so that you can brayer off that excess paint and then you can create another card from that. So what I'm going to do is brayer those two colour paints together so they like that. And then I'm going to brayer that paint directly over my card. And this is what I call a flat colour. And just on the side here, I don't know whether you can see that, but just on the side here, I've got another piece of card where I'm brayering off the excess paint just so I can create another background. So this here is what I call a flat colour. And a flat colour, for me, always needs a bit more life to it. So what I'm going to do, sorry about my voice, I'm just plugging in my heat tool should I need it. So what I'm going to do now is add a touch of the Byzantium. And I'm just going to add a touch of this. And just remember, I'm going with the flow. I've not got a set plan here. I'm going with the flow with products I've got on my desk. So I'm braying out that paint across my bray, like so. And then I'm using a very light, very light touch. Not a dark touch, a light touch over that background of that card. And then I'm using this card here to bray off the excess because this can be used for our flower head. Now I've got two layers of paint on there. So what I'm going to do now is take the honeydew and just lighten that a touch. Just lighten that background a touch. So we're just going to take this and add some lightness to that background, you see? And I'm already loving this background. For me, it's like worn wallpaper and it's, it's what I love. It's like worn wallpaper. Now, if you keep brayering over your background, it blends out those colours for you. So keep blending, keep brayering over your background and it blends out those colours for you. Now, I've put that white on. I'm using opaque paints. And because I'm using opaque paints, they blend beautifully. They blend really well. 
and it means that I don't create mud because obviously sometimes if you use purple and green you can create mud but I'm not creating mud because I'm using opaque paints and opaque means I can layer one on top of the other so that works beautifully for me we'll just clean up a little bit of this paint it's all dried paint so I'm not wasting anything because I've brayed off the excess so we just clear that up a touch like so and then you can see I've got a lovely background a bit of gunk there from the paint and I'm just going to give that a light dry because you've got a sticky layer the paint gives like a plastic layer so you need to make sure that that's dry before you do any stamping if you don't make sure that's dry before you do any stamping well you're not going to get a good impression so I'm going to dry it as much as I can so that we don't waste too much time on the video just drying now I could have had all this prepped within an inch of its life which is what I normally do when I'm live on a chander I have everything prepped but I wanted to take this opportunity and I do this sometimes on a chander as well I like to sometimes just create and go with the flow and see where I end up and I love doing that sometimes so we're using this beautiful fritillaria stamp and just so you can see you've sort of got two elements you've got this background element here and you've got these background elements here as well you've got the wording on its own and you've got the flower so you could mask off areas as well if you didn't want to use the whole thing you could reduce the flower so you only used part of it like so you don't have to use the whole stamp but I've shown that in the previous demos so this time I want to use the whole stamp and I'm just making sure that I give that a really good inking it's important that you give it a really good inking with any stamp whether you're using a small stamp a large stamp still give it a good inking a good even coverage of ink and as per normal I've got it all over my fingers every demo I've got stuff piled all over my fingers but hey ho I'm keeping it real we all know that our hands are covered in paint and ink that's a good sign that you're enjoying yourself so I'm just I've given that a really good inking so now I'm bringing in my card and what I do most times depending sometimes it differs I like to stamp on the side just bringing it towards me I can't bring it too close towards me because you won't see what I'm doing so I'm just going to place that onto our background and what you're going to do is you're going to allow this ink to sit on that background you need to allow it to sit because you've got that painted backdrop which has got if you remember I added three layers four layers of paint so those layers can be sticky even though I've dried them with my heat tool it won't be completely dry sometimes I can still feel the stickiness in the paint now when I lift these this acrylic block to try and get the central area I can still feel some of the stickiness in the paint so it's good that I can lift this acrylic block and get this area here because these are the areas that we often miss so I'm still giving a light pressing just over the complete area of the stamp and just allowing that ink to rest on the card one more lift and we should have a perfect impression which we have and what we've got here is I mean that on its own already looks fantastic you've, you've got every bit of detail on that stamp every bit of detail it's just wonderful I love it and you could leave it like that and just put the sentiment on and that would be fine but why waste what we've created here we've got the waste background that we've added here so rather than waste that we can then stamp our two flower images and this is not a difficult flower to cut out so it won't take me long to cut it out so that's not a problem so we're just stamping this onto our brayed off background and if you do it this way the one advantage of having that brayed off background is that you're getting something that coordinates beautifully with your project because you're using I have hiccups now I do beg your pardon so you now you because you've used the background you've used the brayed off background from the excess paint it means that everything coordinates beautifully 
so you get a wonderful cohesive design. Just mop up those little touches of black ink just so that we don't get black ink everywhere and then what we need to do is make sure that we blot the image because we're using an ink pad with a good open time so you need to make sure that you blot that image because you will get quite a bit of ink off there as you can see you get quite a bit of ink so just give it a blot and when I'm at home I would probably dry as well and because we're going to start we're going to cut that out I'm probably going to give it a little dry as well just because I think that's the best thing to do so just dry that a little bit because we're going to cut those out so normally when I'm at a chandy unless I'm going off the cuff I will already have these cut out but I wanted to show while we've got the opportunity and I'm doing videos at home, I wanted to show that you don't have to prep, you can go with the flow. Like some of you do at home, you can go with the flow. Everything doesn't have to be prepped within an inch of its life. You can just enjoy the process, which is what I'm doing here. I'm just enjoying the process. So just cut those out, nice and easy flower to cut out I love cutting out I find it quite therapeutic but I know some ladies and gentlemen don't like fussy cutting but I just adore fussy cutting it's just one of those things I enjoy so what we've got here like so so now I can add a 3d element to my image so what you can also do is if you want you can add a touch of this green to those flower heads just spray it out and just add a touch of the green just a touch that's perfect spray off the excess because I can use this for another project spray off the excess paint and move that out the way there we go and then we can add this flower here to the top so what I can do is give the flower some life like so but before we add that let's take a look at a stencil so we've got this stencil in the show and I love this stencil I love sort of the randomness of the squares they're not they're not perfect which is what I quite I, I quite like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if if the detail can be picked up with the honeydew so I'm going to try the honeydew or do I try white no do you know I think I'll try white so we'll try some white paint think that might pick it up a little bit more so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this white paint to my stencil and I love this technique sort of mono printing with your stencil using your stencils like a stamp and I love doing this and I do it frequently so just add that to that give a little bit of spritz of water reach over for my kitchen roll which I've just chucked all over the place and what I'm going to do is just add the stencil here let's move those flower images out the way and then just dab that stencil just to make sure that that paint absorbs into those previous layers of paints that we've added just lift it up to make sure you see perfect just adds a little touch of an element I'll lift that up so you can see that can you see the wonderful detail in that stenciling it just adds a lovely detail to the background so I think I'm just going to add a little do you know I don't know whether to just leave it like that no I'm going to leave it like that sometimes less is more and I'm, I'm quite happy with that just dab that excess paint off just clean my stencil a little bit that's what I love about stencils stencils you can just get so much detail out of them and they work beautifully with the stamp sets so as you can see we've now got this and I just love that we'll just give that a little dry and I like the fact that you can still see the black text underneath it works really well can you see the black text still underneath the stenciling I just love that so I'm now going to add the flower so we'll add the flower and all I'm going to do is stick the adhesive towards the top of the flower just so that I can bend 
flour a little bit and allow it. Just get rid of any of that excess glue and just add that. Like so. Just so that flour has got a bit of life. You see, and I love that. Absolutely love that. I think that's fab. And I know what else we can do as well. We can bring in... Do we have our stamp set? I've got that many stamp sets on my desk, either chucked on the floor or... There we go. We want our overlapping texture stamp. And I love adding little details with this stamp. So what we can do again, this is why I think background stamps are so important. They add so much detail to a background, but I'm going for little touches here, nothing too over the top. Just spray out your paint. And what you're going to do is use your paint like an ink pad and pick up, can you see you're picking up that overlapping texture and I'm just going to add a little touch I've missed that bit there we go let's try again let's try again with some of that overlapping texture that's better I was just missing it every time just a little bit of text here that's all you need just these little touches just little touches just in the background perfect so we don't need any more just remember to clean your stamp when you're using paint my stamps very grubby because it's well loved so just wipe up that excess paint and then what you can do is you can stamp if you take the stamp again and this time let's add a black and white element what we can do is we can stamp this fritillaria text here so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to stamp that fritillaria text and I want to stamp it onto stark white card I don't want to have any color so let's just move this up so you can actually see what I'm doing just adding the fritillaria and again, I still let that ink sit, even though I'm just stamping the sentiment. And there we go, that should get it. That's perfect, absolutely perfect. Just that text alone is just gorgeous. Just clean up this. And then we'll just cut out our sentiment. If I wasn't live doing a video, I would cut this out with my cutter. But I'm just going to wing it with my scissors. And this, if you remember, is a card that we've just done off the cuff. We haven't thought about it too much. We've used products that are on our desk, just like you would if you were at home. And you see, I love the starkness of that white against that background because you've got white touches here as well. And I always think a, a little touch of white really lifts a design so we're just going to add that there like so that pop of white really just adds the element and i do like to add some splatters so we'll add some delicate splatters and hope that we're not shaking the camera to with an inch of its life just pump it a little bit more There we go, that's much better. Proper splatters. Whoops, just chucking my pen lid at the other end of the, the room. So let's just put this onto a black mat, just so you can see what it looks like. Let's get rid of all this gunk that's on, the, on my desk so you can see the card in its full glory. So if you add that to a black mat, I just love that. I love the starkness of that white sentiment. But that is a card 
that we've created off the, and I'd put that onto a white card, a white card blank, so we've got a white border as well. And what you've got here is you've got your stenciling, you've got your stamping from your overlapping texture and you've used the stamp. And I just think that on its own, just get rid of that mess there, just works beautifully. I love that stamp. Hope you enjoyed the demo and I'll see you soon for the next demo. Bye.